So the history. Well, the story of paracetamol isn't one of systematic research and cautious evaluation, but rather one of serendipity, errors and failure. So let's start in Strasbourg, 1884, when two whippersnapper medics asked their famous professor, Adolf Kusmol, for help in how to treat one of their patients who had a ton of ailments, which included a worm infestation. Now, Kusmol suggested that they try naphthalene, which was thought of as a gut disinfectant. It didn't work. But much to their surprise, the patient's fever subsided shortly after being given that drug. Now, that was unusual. That never happened before. But then to their even bigger surprise, it turned out that the pharmacy had mixed up the drugs and instead of giving them naphthalene, it had given them acetanilide. Now, research began on acetanilide and it bloody worked. Yeah, you had this weird side effect where the skin turned a bit blue, but don't worry about that. It was mass produced. Of course, Later on, it was found that the bluish skin was actually the drug destroying your hemoglobin. So later on, search for a safer chemical began. And in 1913, a few other scientists synthesized a compound called phenacetin. So following this, scientists tried to find another drug with a better side effect profile and voila, they created paracetamol. Though of course, they didn't use that because when testing it, one of the scientists saw that it turned your blood blue like before, so set it aside. This on hindsight years later, people realized was probably an error because of that scientist, but whatever, paracetamol was put on the back burner until about 1946, when a few American scientists realized that paracetamol was actually the main metabolite of phenacetin. And it was actually much safer and more active than the other one. I mean, it did produce a bry product called uh, NAPQI, a very dangerous reactive chemical, but don't worry about that, we'll come back to that later. Uh, indeed, phenacetin was becoming a bit too dangerous anyway, as watchmakers in Switzerland, who took a lot of it to deal with the headaches from staring at those tiny mechanics all day long, ended up dying of kidney failure. So paracetamol took off, but it was only decades later when people realized that paracetamol causes liver failure in over dose because of that nap QI bastard. And I know I said paracetamol was pretty safe earlier. As time goes on, we're actually beginning to learn of the more negative side effects of paracetamol, especially when you take it long term. So it is very possible that you might not be seeing paracetamol for too much longer. In fact, if you discovered paracetamol today, you probably wouldn't approve it for human use. 